In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can design for accessibility in Canvas Power Apps. In this video, we're going to see how you can design for accessibility in your Canvas apps. Now, we're going to be looking in this particular video at the various properties that you can be using. So the first one I want to talk about is the tab index. You see it right at the bottom. So this allows for keyboard navigation. So if I was playing an app and I press tab, you can see that the computer doesn't go to every single control. It goes to those which I say should have a tab stop, or at least the computer said that. So I've been pressing tab to get from one to another. And that's indicated by this tab index. So you can see that the computer, when it was going all the way down, was doing it in a visual order. Now, if for some reason it doesn't do it in a visual order, you might need to rejig things to make it more accessible. Containers can group related content together, and the form card and the gallery controls are automatically grouped. So let's have a look at this tab index. There are two recommended values. Zero means it should have a tab stop. In other words, when you press tab, please stop here. Minus one means don't stop here. So if a tab index is minus one, it cannot be accessed by keyboard navigation. You noticed when I was tabbing through all of that, it didn't once go onto this red label. Can you have tab indexes greater than zero? Yes, you can but it is not recommended as it can break certain screen readers. Now we've also got the visible. So if visible equals false, then again, the control is not included in keyboard navigation and you can't see it, so how can it be? Equally, if the display mode is disabled, then it will also not be included in keyboard navigation. So what if you want it to be available for accessibility purposes, but you don't actually want anybody to be able to see it, to click on it. Well, there are two ways. First of all, you can change the size, so the width or the height. You can change that to say zero or one, make it really small. Additionally, you can change the color. So if you change the color to something that is invisible, you're transparent, then again, you won't be able to see it to click on it, but it will still be available for accessibility. Next, I want to look at labels. So there are two things particularly I want to look at, and they are in the advanced section. First of all, we have got live. So what happens when the label changes? Maybe I've got a button and the label changes. Well, there are three different settings. First of all, there is off. So the change happens on screen, but the screen reader doesn't say it. Then there is polite, so the screen reader just keeps on going what, whatever it's doing and then when it finishes, it says there is a change to this. Assertive is like a news headline. It interrupts what it was doing to say there is a change. So that's live. And then we've got role. What role does this label have? Maybe this role is a heading. It could be a heading one, heading two, heading three or heading four. Alternatively, it could just be default for default text. So it's just to help any screen readers interpret the screen. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is if you've got a toggle. So this is an on off. And we can set the default to on or off. We can show the label. But I want to talk about the false value and the true value. So this is how the on off gets interpreted not only on the screen, but also by the screen readers. So in this video, we've had a look at various properties that you should design for when designing for accessibility. So we have got the tab index. Are you going to stop there? Zero means yes, minus one means no. We've got labels, the live and role. Live, should I say any changes? Role, what sort of role is there? And for toggles, we have got the false text and true text. So the screen interpreter can say that this toggle is set to on, for instance.
So you've designed your app, but how accessible is it really? Well, one good way of finding out is by using the app checker. Now you can also use the solution checker that we've had a look at earlier as well, that also checks Canvas apps for accessibility issues. So you can see there are 69 issues that it wants me to address. So 42 of them are missing an accessibility label. So if I click on anything like this, you can see that right near the top, we've got accessibility label. And at the moment, it is defaulting to the tooltip, view item details. So that is fine. However, if I click on this plus, for instance, you can see that the tooltip and the accessibility labels are both blank. So I think we will say add a new account and we can say for this one self, which means this particular icon, we'll put in self dot tooltip. So then that solves that and you can see the number of errors going down enormously. Once you have got, for instance, missing accessibility labels solved, then it may solve other things. So for instance, adding in the tooltips may stop some things. Now missing tab stops. So we had a look at tab stops previously. So should somebody using accessibility controls be able to use this refresh icon? I say, yeah, they probably should. And so I'm going to change that tab index to a zero. So now that is solved for that particular one. So what other messages have we got in terms of errors? Well, if you've got a screen, if I insert a new screen, this is called screen three, and that's not good. So really what we need to do is revise the screen name. And that is more of a tip than an error, but I would say it is an error because quite often screen readers will say the screen name when loaded. And if it says, screen free, that's not going to be very helpful. So we've had a look in the previous video about the toggles, making sure that they have valid false text and true text. Suppose I was to insert a picture. Well, we should have text and change picture text for screen readers. Change picture text is text that appears on the button when an image has been loaded. Now you should also have focus indicators. So if I go down to spare screen and just insert some media and recheck this, there are no errors at the moment. So we have got everything that we need. If I go back into advanced and scroll down, we will have the focused section. So we've got focused border color and focused border thickness. So this is what happens when an item has the focus. So maybe you get an error for that. For audio and video controls, then there is the closed caption URL. So closed captions also known as subtitles. And you can see I have got a missing captions warning. Now, if the default controls are turned off, then again, we may have a warning of missing helpful control settings. Equally, if auto start is set to true, then we may get a warning saying you should turn off auto start. Now, if you insert a pen control, then you may get a tip, add another input method. And generally, if labels and market charts aren't shown, you may get a warning missing helpful control settings. And if control contains HTML and the control is not a HTML text control, then you get a warning HTML won't be accessible. So you can see the sort of warnings that you get. But the important thing is know how you can generate them for your app. And you can do that by going to the app checker and having a look at accessibility or you can go to your solution and have a look at the solution checker where you'll be able to see things regarding accessibility. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then why not like it? And why not subscribe and click that bell so you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.